Yeah? Yeah. Um, all right, okay, well, my number two is Grand Theft Auto V. Um, I assume it's your number one. Uh, it is my number one, yes. Okay, how, how, how much have you done? So, I've played... I don't know in terms of hours, and I don't want to say exactly where I am in case people want, want to go in completely blind, and I respect that. But uh, I'm about, I would guess, maybe 12 to 14 hours in and probably about a quarter of the way into the story, I would guess, maybe a little bit before. i tell you what I have done. There's a series of heists in the game. I've done the first heist and then a bunch after that. So uh, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that... No, actually, it might be, so fuck it, I won't say it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a decent chunk in, but I still feel like I'm only kind of scratching the surface there's a hell of a lot more to come which is why I don't want to consider this like a review because I don't think I've played enough I wouldn't feel comfortable labeling talking about this right now as a review so this is more like what I think of the game so far even though it's probably likely not to actually change you know it's such a big game and such a vast expansive uh, project that I don't I just don't want to label it like that just just at this moment in time if you know what I mean Mm. Uh, well, how are you finding it so far? Well, um, I, as people who know me and, and, and probably people who listen to this podcast, I'm a huge fan of these you know, Rockstar's open world games, uh, as, as so many other people are, considering it made $800 million in the first day. Mm. But, um, like, a huge, huge fan. Like It's kind of become fashionable to, to slate GTA 4 these days, and while that game hasn't aged brilliantly in terms of things like checkpointing and and some of the mission design, I still think it's like one of the true masterpieces of this genre. Uh, so to get that, with what I thought was so amazing about GTA 4 was the level of detail um, in, in creating a city that felt, it didn't feel real, it didn't feel like I was in a real city, it felt like I was in a real, the real vision of what they've always tried to create in a GTA city. And this, GTA 5 has that level of detail. It's actually got more detail, but it's also got the scope of San Andreas and to a, to a different extent, uh, Red Dead Redemption. Just, it starts off brilliantly with the flashback initially, then you're dropped into the city with Franklin. And it felt like, a, I felt like I was back in San Andreas, the game, but also like, with the GTA 4 engine, but like way enhanced, it looks fucking phenomenal at times. But then later on, as I've explored North, because at first I was kind of scared to, not not because something would happen, but I don't know, I felt like I was safe in the city, I understood what was happening, and out there was just this kind of wild expanse, and maybe part of it was not wanting to see everything the game had to offer straight away, or maybe it was just the fact that this is the first GTA that hasn't restricted you, because all the other GTAs have restricted you to one area, then as you get further, you you can open up new areas, but this allows you to, to drive wherever you want. And that first trip to the desert was just like, this is this is quite, this really is quite something. They've really gone above and beyond this time. I don't really, I don't really understand how this game gets made. I understand that it's made by hundreds and hundreds of people and it costs hundreds of millions of dollars. That I understand, but it more from a creative, uh, artistic and technical point of view, I don't know how the fuck they made this shit. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it is, it does possess, uh, it is, it is jaw dropping what they've achieved, and yeah. you know, it's uh, a beautiful game, and just they, they've totally and utterly nailed Los Angeles, um, and it's something that's true of all big cities. But the, you know, if you've ever been there, I've only been there. Once. I've actually not. Have you not? No, I've never um, been. The first, I mean, you notice this in almost every city, but I mean, the discrepancy between rich and poor in Los Angeles is so vast. I remember being, uh, uh, you know, eight minutes away from Hollywood Boulevard, and they're, uh, they're on the side of a freeway, there was a family living in a shack, and I was just like, I can't quite, you can't get your head around that. Yeah. This completely nails that. You can tell, you can be in the most opulent area, and then a few streets down, the, you're in a completely different part of town. It somehow mm. manages to to put what's a huge city into into such a small space, and it looks. I mean, yeah, it just looks ridiculous. Um, what I like so much about the storytelling is that in that one problem that I have had with GTA games in the past is that the storytelling was almost completely restricted to the cutscenes. Mm. You it would say you have to go here and do this, you'd go there and do it, you'd come back, more cutscenes and then the story would move on. In this, a lot of the story comes when you're actually playing the game and it that's so so exciting. It's because it's something that GTA's toyed with a little bit, but by and large it's always been uh, kind of restricted to sort of keeping one one in one area one in the other um Mm. i also i know some people haven't liked this but i absolutely love the fact that there's three characters 
and, yeah, and, I, I, and I love the fact that when you flip between them, I, it's part part of me wants to try and break it to see because whenever you jump from to another character, they're somewhere doing something, and yeah. you're like, why? How did they get there? I wonder what they were doing. I know if I did it enough times, it would repeat, and you. Mm. But uh, it's it, it's so cool. It feels like you're toying with a film, bouncing yeah. between these three different characters. I know a lot of people like the progression of having one one sort of cipher to move. You know, I, yeah. I, I think this is so much more engaging. Um, as far as I, the, the police, I one issue, another thing that's prob- been a problem for me in GTA games in the past is that the police can often see you through buildings. So you know. One of the best things you were able to do in like Driver is, you know, you can take a, a, a sharp turn into a back alley, hi- sit there and hide. Yeah. Um, and GTA has never really allowed you to do that, and you can't really. I mean, now on the little when you see the police on the radar, they've got this sort of. Uh, you can see what their field of vision. Yeah. If they drive and it's you're you know you're invisible to them, but that touches you through a wall, they'll come and you know that, that's a bit of a letdown, but. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, it's its incredible so far. I think I'm 25% of the way through the story, um, according right. to the stats in the, in the game, and uh, I haven't seen any of the really contentious stuff yet. Um, no, I've not, so I can't comment on that yeah, at I, all. Wouldn't want to. Yeah. Um, I love, I mean, yeah, it's funny how when GTA 4 came out, I mean, before GTA 4 came out, it's funny that Saints Row 4 just came out and it, Saints Row 1 came out just before GTA 4. So in that space of time, they've released three sequels. Yeah. But one thing that, G, that Saints Row did, I said, I hope that GTA nicks the uh, adaptable waypoint because you can never adapt the waypoints previously. You can never set a waypoint and then drive there. You ha- It was always just... Uh, you had to sort of manoeuvre it yourself, and GTA Four was GTA Four the first to do that. I think so. Yeah, uh, and in the same way, they've kind of nicked a little bit of Saints Row. Have you done any of Trevor's uh, rampage missions? Uh, done one, yeah. That's straight out of Saints Row, completely yeah, consequence-free and you know ridiculous. And then when it's finished, there's no yeah, you just you know it's like Saints Row. It's just like it stops and then yeah. the game's back to normal, which uh, seems like. Those guys are definitely paying attention to what Saints Row. Uh, yeah, they definitely. They've made some real concessions, haven't they, as well to what they they used to be with four and the older games. They were right stuck in their ways. This is the way GTA works, and that's why four didn't have any checkpoints. They made concessions to that in the DLC games, the DLC packs, and then Red Dead and whatnot. I know that's just different team, but it's all fucking same. Um, but this, yeah, now they've got the the GPS on the map. You never had that before. Uh, now you've got proper checkpointing, actually really like good checkpointing I'm finding in the missions. Mm. Um, yeah, they just, they made it a much more playable game. And on that tip, the fucking driving and the shooting are both fantastic. GTA for me, from three onwards, was like, this is amazing, shame the gameplay isn't that good, but it doesn't matter. Vice City especially, San Andreas improved, four decent but still you'd say like shooting's not great the the driving's good but it's not like a real driving game both of them for me like the shooting is up there with once i switched it to free aim which i'd highly recommend doing it's just up there like the way the physics work uh the guns are so satisfying i like the uh the different special moves that you have with trevor the fucking psycho filter is amazing yeah. and then the thing that's really blowing me away is the driving model i've spent literally hours just driving even on the same streets up around the hollywood hills and just just beyond in a nice car uh just cruising like not crashing as well which is something you always used to crash in gta you'd eventually spin out or clip something that still happens a lot but i've been able to drive for ages without crashing just by softly um using the right analog to to kind of ease off the gas it just feels so good just doing that um they finally really really nailed the gameplay for me the actual moment to moment mission stuff that was always the weakest part of these games was the missions now i'm fucking looking forward to every mission i come on every single one's been a cracker i haven't been on a shit one yet Mm. um amazing game one last point that i wanted to make like i say i can't get final verdicts we haven't seen the contentious stuff there's loads more of the game to come you know, we're in a situation where I can take my time a little bit, which is nice because I must have written a hundred thousand words on GTA in the past, over reviewing the previous games, writing previews, writing features. It's kind of nice just to be able to play it and talk about it, but yeah, not have to actually put any words on paper. But this is a game. I was, I was thinking this yesterday, where at one point I walked up the mountain at the top end of the map, Mount Chiliad. It took me about twenty minutes to walk up, 
looked out from the top and you can see everything. I don't know if you've been up there, but the view's fucking incredible. Yeah, yeah. So you've got that incredible scale. A bit later on, I was flying a plane over that area. Those mountains suddenly seemed small because I was high up in a plane and it was still taking me ages to just roam this vast expanse and see things moving below. And that was amazing. But then later on still, I was playing as Michael and I was down in, um, down in like Venice Beach equivalent, Vespucci Beach at half health and I decided to go and buy a hot dog and uh, just went up, as you do, definitely in GTA 4, and I assume it's the same in this, just walk up to the hot dog guy, press left or right on a D-pad, whatever it is, and buy a hot dog, get your health back. But for some reason, it didn't activate the thing to buy the hot dog, and Michael just did it where he just went up to the hot dog vendor and went, fuck you! <laughs> so, <laughs> so the vendor just stepped out, like, it looked real. He just kind of, like, got all affronted and his shoulder popped, his shoulders went back and his chest came out and he kind of stumbled around his car and he was like pushing me and he was like fuck you buddy and then I just pressed R and Michael just threw a picture perfect uppercut one shot KO <laughs> into the guy's jaw and he just dropped like his knees buckled beneath him and he just dropped and I was like this is amazing so but then everybody started to scatter and I got a one star so I was like okay I'm just going to get in a car and book it nicked a, uh, a nearby car started turning around the corner and then some dudes in the way some like jock guys just did his swimming shorts so I start honking him and he looks at me and then grabs a phone and just starts taking a photo of me on his phone and I was like how is this the same game where an hour ago I was up in the, up in the sky <laughs> looking at this map how is it this detailed and I feel like I'm having real interactions with real people in the crazy GTA world a world where um I love, and I'd imagine next week I'll get to talk about some of the uh, the more interesting points of what people are talking about, the representations of characters, representation, representations of, of female characters, contentious scenes. I'm interested to talk about all of that stuff, but I have no way near played enough to, to even go into that stuff. Um, I mean, Rockstar do... I mean, this is almost a cliche to say it, but it, they do do things like this on a complete... They're, they're, there's no one to touch them. No. The, le the level of detail is absolutely... Just boggles the mind. Yeah. And um, the way they handle... I mean, it, the, the sort of hustle and bustle of New York was kind of replicated to a degree in GTA mm. 4, but there's bits in this where... The, one of the worst things about Los Angeles is traffic. If you go and ask somebody, a taxi driver, to take you somewhere and say you need to be here by a certain time, he'll laugh at you. There are bits where you can tell that how it's sort of cleverly as soon as one car goes out there it will appear on a different but the hustle and bustle of being in a city and it being really fast and so much going on mm. I don't know how they did it on this current hardware I don't think anything's come even close to how, how sort of effective they've done that effectively sorry um the driving, you're right about the driving, it's the best it's ever been. I'm not, it's no surprise that it's kind of taken a little bit of burnout with it, yeah. especially when you're playing as um, uh, Franklin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's at this point. It's it's as well as being jaw dropping technically. I like the way it's doing things with the narrative. I, I just I think it's uh, it's incredibly special. Again, I can't really talk about. I mean, the, the misogyny thing is is difficult because people a lot of people are talking about it whilst also saying they haven't played it, and I still have a problem with that. Yeah, I do. Um, people are sort of you know Graham Linehan, someone who everyone respects, and he was on Twitter saying it's making all of these concrete judgments and comments about the game and I just thought God I mean there's no way you do that about a book or a film that you hadn't seen or a book you hadn't read there's no way in the world I don't no. know why it's kind of rewound almost a hundred years so people think that this is yeah it's weird I mean I do know that I felt kind of uncomfortable a couple of times because it seems so full on I mean there was that comment at the beginning where uh, Michael's son and his sister are having a uh, his son and daughter are having an argument he's like oh fucking rape you I'll rape you and I was just like Ugh. It, I kind of just wish it wasn't there, but at the same time, it's these are supposed to be the most unpleasant people on the planet, and yeah. if I'm saying that that's wrong, do, is there a line that's crossed, and where is that line? Do we need to compile a list of things? You know, it's. I think people go off on these weird tangents and they don't realise what they're actually asking. I mean, it's, I, I, I think there's no argument that they're supposed to be scumbags, mm. um, but hopefully, well, hopefully, I mean, I, I'd like to see no more of that crap just because it's kind of... Uh, it, but it's supposed to be. That's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem with all of these situations. What, what I will say, I mean, if I'll put my hands up first, right? This is not me finalising my opinion. I need to play a lot more of the game and uh, I don't know. Something might happen later in the game. I might change my opinion. I'm more than open to, to that. So this isn't me stamping my feet and going, this is what I think, and I'm never changing my mind. I'm never like that anyway, but especially now. But having played, and I 
think some of the people who talk about this stuff haven't actually played a lot of GTA. Having played to completion every single Grand Theft Auto game and expansion pack, every single one, I think that I have a fairly decent understanding of the tone that they're trying to create. I don't think this is totally much different to 4 or to San Andreas or to Vice City. They're all very similar. The, the, the kind of rock star, hyper real world is very similar in all of them. And basically, it is a world where everyone, from the characters, from the uh, supporting cast, to the fucking people in the street, everyone is terrible. But they're all played for laughs, even when it gets nasty. Now, again, not seeing the contentious stuff, so like I said, gonna withhold judgment on final opinions, blah, 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 blah. It's not justifying what I'm saying. I would be surprised that I will change my, if I would be surprised if anything made me think in a different way even if occasionally it might make you go ugh but I've always given them a break because they're writing however many thousands of pages of script compared to, to you know a two hour movie or whatever but uh, that's the world that they've created everybody everybody on the street the random people everyone male female everyone is awful everyone that's that's what it is but not in a like depressing way i just find it funny but that's that's been the world that they've created since especially since three but even since the first game so you know which was different people but oh let, let's see let, yeah. let, let, let's see what i think later on yeah i mean I, i've seen a lot of talk about have you done any of the paparazzi missions yes i've done the first two or three i think that i mean that is like amped up the most unpleasant character I've ever seen in anything I think yeah it's so vulgar and unpleasant and just just a scum scumbag but it's he kind of reminded me of you know that famous sort of semi-famous clip where Steve Coogan and Greg Dyke are grilling that guy who used to run the Daily Mirror or something uh, I don't it was on oh, the no, news maybe I have, no, yes, yeah. I have. So yeah, I have seen that. Yeah. And he's just, he has the he has the physical attributes of a worm. He's just slashing. Yes, it, going, yes, oh, yeah, 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 of like, course, yeah. You just like you you are absolutely repellent, and this is this seems like that turned up to fucking five thousand and one. Yeah. Um, so and people saying that that's unpleasant. I'm like that guy has cl- he's clearly supposed to be. Well, anyway, we'll yeah, talk about. Yeah, fuck yeah. Well, if you're saying that that's unpleasant, and you're saying, oh, I don't like the game, then I'm sorry, you're stupid. It's like, come on, this guy's a scumbag. He's supposed to be a scumbag. It's supposed to be a very obvious comment on how fucking scummy paparazzi are. Yeah. It's not like it's difficult. Yeah, that's just people getting fucking their knickers in a twist. Um, and I mean, but- I mean, boys. Yeah, but the danger with all of that stuff, as always, is that everyone tries to insinuate that this implies that the people who created it are unpleasant. And I just, when talk goes in that direction, I want to tear my hair out. Yeah, me too. Um, but we, well, we, we, we shouldn't speak about it because we haven't finished it. But we'll, um, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll talk. Yeah, about it or even I time. don't feel like I played enough. I mean, yeah. we don't necessarily have to finish it. But I definitely don't feel like I played enough. But oh well. Yeah, we've been uh, both of us. I think have been frustrated throughout the week in reading things. But uh, what we should actually do is just unfollow all the people that annoy us on Twitter and just basically follow each other and maybe like three other people, Danny <laughs> Dyer, someone else, yeah. and then we don't have any of these problems anymore. But God damn it, if we're not addicted to the chaos, much like the characters in Grand Theft Auto V, hey, they call me a professional. <laughs> Nicely done. like a huge huge fan like it's kind of become fashionable to to slate gta 4 these days and while that game hasn't aged brilliantly in terms of things like checkpointing and and some of the mission design i still think it's like one of the true masterpieces of this genre uh, so to get that with what i thought was so amazing about gta 4 was the level of detail um in, in creating a city that felt it didn't feel real. It didn't feel like I was in a real city. It felt like I was in a real... Yeah? Yeah. Um, all right, okay. Well, my number two is Grand Theft Auto V. Um, I assume it's your number one. Uh, it is my number one, yes. Okay, how, how, how much have you done? So I've played... I don't know in terms of hours, and I don't want to say exactly where I am in case people want, want to go in completely blind, and I respect that. But uh, I'm about, I would guess, maybe 12 to 14 hours in and probably about a quarter of the way into the story. I would so far, even though it's probably likely not to actually change, you know, it's such a big game and such a vast, expansive uh, project that I don't, I just don't want to label it like that just at, just at this moment in time, if you know what I mean. Mm. 
Uh, well, how are you finding it so far? Well, um, I, as people who know me and, and probably people who listen to this podcast, I'm a huge fan of these of Rockstar's open world games, uh, as, as so many other people are considering it made $800 million in the first day. Mm. But uh, I guess maybe a little bit before, i tell you what I have done. There's a series of heists in the game. I've done the first heist and then a bunch after that. So uh, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that... No, actually it might be, so fuck it, I won't say it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a decent chunk in, but I still feel like I'm only kind of scratching the surface. There's a hell of a lot more to come, which is why I don't want to consider this like a review, because I don't think I've played enough. I wouldn't feel comfortable labelling, talking about this right now as a review. So this is more like what I think of the game, the real vision of what they've always tried to create in a GTA city. And this... GTA 5 has that level of detail. It's actually got more detail, but it's also got the scope of San Andreas and to a, to a different extent, uh, Red Dead Redemption. Just, it starts off brilliantly with the flashback initially, then you're dropped into the city with Franklin. And it felt like, a, uh, I felt like I was back in San Andreas, the game, but also like with the GTA, 